A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. In these words, prophesy to them. Thus says the Lord God, woe to the shepherds of Israel who have been pastoring themselves. Should not shepherds rather pastor sheep? You have fed off their milk, worn their wool, and slaughtered the fatlings. But the sheep you have not pastured. You do not strengthen the weak, nor heal the sick, nor bind up the injured. You do not bring back the stray, nor seek the lost. But you lorded over them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered for the lack of a shepherd and became food for all the wild beasts. My sheep were scattered and wandered over all the mountains and high hills. My sheep were scattered over the whole earth with no one to look after them or to search for them. Therefore, shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord God, because my sheep have been given over to pillage and because my sheep have become food for every wild beast, for lack of a shepherd, because my shepherds did not look after my sheep, but pastured themselves and did not pasture my sheep, because of this shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, I swear I am coming against these shepherds. I will claim my sheep from them and put a stop to their shepherding my sheep so that they may no longer pasture themselves. I will save my sheep that they may no longer be food for their mouths. For thus says the Lord God, I myself look after and tend my sheep. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, 
you too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off, and he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, he found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers, give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. The parables of Jesus are meant to tease our minds, to make us scratch our heads, and to really think and ponder and always ask that question is, where am I in this story? And the story right away tells us one thing. It tells us that God's way of thinking is sometimes, maybe often, not the way we think as human beings whose, who our intellects are clouded, God who knows all things. The story is really telling us an important message. It's never too late until it is too late. In other words, God's gift of salvation is always there for us. Certainly it's not an excuse for us to ever procrastinate, to push aside God and indulge ourselves in all the distractions of this world, thinking that I've always got time. No, that's not what the story's about, but still, it's never too late to turn back to God. And it's also about God's generosity, the generous mercy of God. The foreman is paying money. God obviously doesn't pay us money, but God offers us eternal life, the most generous gift of all because none of us deserve it. We are all sinners. And all sin is offensive to God, and yet God still wants us to live with him in all eternity. And so God is always giving us ample opportunities to turn back in little ways and sometimes in much bigger ways. And so as we begin this new day together, let's open our hearts again to that conversion, to that call that God is giving us. And that's really what it's all about, is it's the call for us to enter into the life of God. We come before the Lord today in gratitude for his generosity and mercy and ask that he hear our petitions for our needs and those of the world. For all church leaders, that they will continue to tend to the pastoral needs of those in their care and build up disciples to do Christ's work on earth, let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations torn by ethnic or religious violence, may they stand up for the dignity of all their people regardless of race or religion, let us pray to the Lord. For all who are alienated or disconnected from the church, may the Holy Spirit touch their hearts and restore them to unity with their brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For all communion ministers to the homebound in our parish, 
May they be blessed with the grace to continue to serve their brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intention of our Mass this morning, for the infusion of the Holy Spirit upon all the priests here in Oshkosh, let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for those who have gone before us, especially we remember the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father George Massey and Father Anthony Krause. And for all our loved ones, may they see God face to face in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear and answer our prayers according to your most holy will. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 